my career before I started my wildly successful career development company, Dream Career Lab, was as a hiring director at one of the biggest companies in the world, actually the biggest consulting, accounting, professional services company. They're called Deloitte and they make about $50 billion a year. You might have heard of them. So being in that position, right, hiring in the global HQ that I worked at, which was uh, in New York in the Rockefeller Center, you kind of pick up a few things. You kind of learn quite a lot about the hiring process, right, when you're part of the hiring team. So I wasn't a recruiter. I wasn't a member of the HR team. I was actually a core member of the consulting team in my department, right, and I was also and I also had a lot of influence when it came to hiring. And as I said, I learned a lot of things. So in this video, I'm going to cover kind of the four biggest key impactful things that you should know from the inside, right? From me being in that position, if you want to get hired into a great company, actually any company, any great position, because all companies have these same issues and these same things that they have to go through. So the first one, and what people might you know struggle with is the fact that we used to find it quite difficult to hire good people right key distinction here not college grads and right i actually well, our business doesn't doesn't help college grads and people who are very early in their career because it's oftentimes unfortunately it's about the college you attend and those kind of things right is it fair no i completely disagree with it but it's different. We're not here to change that, right? I believe it's going to change over the next few years with online learning and all that stuff, but it's not all him to talk about today. What I'm here to talk about is when you get a bit further on in your career, when you've got five, eight, 10 years, all the way up to 30 years of experience, we used to find it really, really challenging to hire good people at that level. Why was that? Essentially, nobody thought that we would hire them. It was a catch-22 situation. It was a chicken and an egg problem, right? People thought, well, companies like Deloitte, all the best companies that I would like to work for, they don't hire people apart from college grads, right? I've never got any chance. So we'd never get any applications. We'd never get any people actually coming along saying, hey, yeah, I want to work in this department, particularly for the smaller areas, right? Particularly for the more niche services that they offered. People oftentimes didn't even know they existed. How can you apply for a role that you don't even know exists? It's pretty challenging, right? So that's the first thing. So if you've ever been held back from going after your dream role because you think, well, they're not going to hire someone like me, you're wrong. They will. And so you need to take that mindset of, oh, I can't do it. You know, pull it out of your head and dump it in the trash can because it's not serving you. It really isn't. So the next point, point number two, is the fact that actually applying for these roles is never the best way of doing things. I talk a lot in my other videos about the hidden job market, right? And, and the reason I talk about it is because I've seen it firsthand, right? I've seen it now so much with, you know, we've had more than 2,000 clients who've had success with, with our method, the reverse job search method. I've seen it firsthand so many times now, but historically when I used to work at Deloitte, I saw it every single day. I saw it peeking its head. You'd have people who had never applied for positions getting hired. And they did it all through building relationships with key people. Now, building relationships with key people is it's not easy. If you, if you, right, okay, let me rephrase that. It is simple, but it's not easy. Unless you know the step-by-step -step process that you should take. Most people think, well, I don't already know someone. Right? They're not already in my network. I don't already have this relationship, so I may as well give up. There's nothing I can do. Again, completely wrong. The answer actually is having a methodology for going out and building all these relationships the same way that salespeople do. Right? If you go into a, if you go into a new role, if you work in sales, you'll understand what I mean. You go into a sales role and you have to you know, build up your book of contacts really quickly, otherwise you're going to get fired in the first month exactly what you need to do when it comes to trying to secure your dream job because no one else is going to do it for you recruiters don't care about you right executive search firms they don't care about you no one cares about your career except you so you need to treat it the way a salesperson will treat their their new book of business that they that they're getting hold of right when they first start in their um in their sales job it's so so important that you understand this and the next two things i want to talk about were interview 
or involved with interviewing. So the first one, and this is really funny and people just don't get this, is the fact that the number one thing that you need to do in an interview is not answer questions. It's not showcase your amazing technical knowledge. It's very, very simple. You need to get on really well with the interviewer or interviewers, right? It's a little bit hard with a panel interview, but when it, you're one-on-one -on -one or in a small group with people, right? You need to be building a very positive, strong relationship with that person or those people very quickly, right? If you get on well with the interviewer, your chances of being hired are exponentially increased. It's almost, it almost never happens that anybody gets hired if they do not get on very well with the key person in the interview chain, right? And what we're talking about here is, oftentimes you'll be interviewed by three, five different people at a company, either in a panel, individually, there'll be different rounds of interviews, but at the end of the day, there's one person who's gonna make that decision, right? Maybe two. There's one or two people who are gonna make that final decision. All the other people interviewing you are just to check that you don't do anything crazy, right? If you start saying something racist in one of the interviews or you know, you know something like that, that's what the other interviews are for. It's kind of to get that group understanding of what you're like and to check that you're not doing anything crazy. But overall, there is gonna be one, maybe two people who are actually gonna make that final decision. That's what you have to understand. And that is key because if that one or two, one or two people like you and really get on with you, they'll hire you. Almost nothing else matters, right? Because you cannot train behaviors. You cannot train personality. You cannot train the ability to build relationships. You can train skills. You can easily train those kind of things. You cannot train the other side. So it's so important that you do everything you can to be the kind of person they'd want to hire. And there are ways that you can develop this very quickly, right? Again, something that we teach our clients, but just remember this, that it's not about going in and do all these interview, you know, tricks about what, how you answer a certain question. That almost doesn't matter. What matters is being that person that they want to hire. And then finally, when it comes to interviews, there's another thing that people don't understand, right? I've talked to people and I've got them myself many times. I've, I've undertaken 500 interviews probably. Um, and there's many times that I got um, a, a thank, an interview thank you note, an email saying, James, great meeting with you during the interview about a week later, right? Way too late then. Almost always the decision to hire you or move you on to the next stage of the interview process happens immediately after the interview. So what will happen is the people that interview you, whether it's a panel, whether it's a, a you know a few people um, in one day, or it's just one person, right? They will decide there and then, or a few hours afterwards when they get back together, whether they want to move you on or whether they want to hire you. Why do they do that? Because that's the time that they're gonna remember you. They're not gonna remember you a week later, right? They're not gonna remember everything you said three days later, two weeks later, whenever it might be. They're gonna remember everything immediately and they're gonna form that opinion and then they're gonna act on that opinion. Sending a thank you note or anything else that you're going to send should be done immediately. Otherwise it's pointless. It's completely pointless because they will have already made that decision. And the only thing a thank you note or anything like that can do is, you know, can be the difference between the tiebreaker. So if they get a great email from you after the, after the interview and the other person who is kind of neck and neck level with you doesn't send anything, that can be the thing that pushes you over the edge. So you have to understand that because it's so, so important. And most people just don't understand any of these. Most people just don't even understand that the hidden job market exists. They don't understand that the call to passing interviews is not about the questions you answer and all those other things. It's about how you in engage and interact with the interviewer on a personal level. And if you do understand these things, then congratulations, because you're going to find it so much easier to get hired into that role that you want to get hired into. And this is the thing that I teach my clients every single day, right? It's the core components of the reverse job search method. It's not about saying, hey, I've got these skills and these experiences. Now, which box do I fit in that I can find on a job board, right? That's not the way of doing things. That's not taking your life and designing it the way you want to so you can achieve your goals, right? That's just the scattergun approach. It's like throwing spaghetti at the wall. What you actually want to do is you say, these are my goals, right? This is what I want to do based on my goals. This is what I think will fulfill me and give me the potential to do more, right? 
higher income levels, if that's what I want. Now, given my experience and skills, etc., how do I make it happen? That is the reverse job search method and everything that goes along with it. Okay, and if you if you if you don't know this, I have uh, recently. And if you, if you didn't know this, I've actually written an Amazon best-selling book, which goes into detail about how the reverse job search method works, covers the four things that I just mentioned then, including a whole load more as well. Um, so if any of that resonated with you, then I would go ahead uh, and there's a link below this video, click on it and you can see the book. It's actually on offer at the moment. Uh, and also click the subscribe button on this video because I release a lot of content all about the same stuff, about doing things completely differently, which if you're somebody who has five, eight, 10 years experience plus all the way up to, you know, your near retirement, then this is how it works for you, right? It's totally different for you. It's not the same as, well, as, as how it works for college grads and entry level people. It's very different for you. So make sure that you understand that and then you action the things that are going to actually make the difference for you and not worry about your resume and all those other things so much. So check out the book, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.